Hello guys, Josh here. Uh, this is the third episode of Review Rewind. If you didn't know about my shirt, I love this shirt. This was a promotional shirt when the DVD was coming out. If you haven't guessed, today's video is The Hind Mansion. Starring Eddie Murphy. Uh, came out November 26, 2003. I was there opening night with some cousins and my aunts. We all went and saw it. I love the movie. Much as the attraction. Favorite attraction of all time. I think Pirates is a better film than this. But still love it. Funny. Anyway, uh, the budget was 90 and made 182, so not a huge hit because uh, the theaters get some of that and then uh, wherever their marketing budget was is factored in. To, it's not included in the main budget, so and then actors get some. Anyway, <laughs> so it probably broke even. If that, but uh, still pretty cool. Love this movie, it's so funny. <laughs> uh, we'll get to how it, uh, how it compares to the attraction, if they stayed faithful or not. Uh, but I love the attraction that this is based on. Han Mansion, of course, being my all time favorite attraction. At Walt Disney or pretty much anywhere else. <laughs> Back to the Future the ride was very close when I was a kid. Of course before that Pirates was my favorite attraction. And Spider-Man is up there as well. But this isn't to talk about my top five favorite attractions <laughs> of all time. Uh, just strictly Han Mansion. Uh... I can't really s I did a video on why I like the Hind Mansion, so go back and check that out so we don't really have to spend too much time here. I, I made a whole uh, script, as we call in the biz, but uh, just some talking points. Like when I'm out thrifting, obviously I don't have a script, but for reviews, I need to know what pictures will be over there and how I want to order things. Anyway, you probably didn't need to know that, but... <laughs> Love the Hind Mansion. Uh, the most I've done it in one day is ten times. I want to try and top that on my birthday. I will. Well, you'll be seeing this after my birthday, but on my birthday I want to try and top ten rides on the Hind Mansion. Alright, let's get to the movie. Uh, the opening is very cool, how they do the tarot cards. That is a beautiful shot. Love the opening scene and how they uh, set up uh, the main characters with that whole ballroom scene, which is basically from the attraction, but I wish it had been shown. They pepper it throughout We'll talk about that. They pepper it throughout the movie. But uh, that's cool. And then it, it jumps ahead to present day with the paper boy. And there's this flyer of Evers and Evers in real estate. And it zooms in to Eddie Murphy's face. And then it transitions beautifully to him trying to sell a house. I think that's a great transition when... Directors think ahead like that. Love that. Uh, speaking of Eddie Murphy, let's go ahead and talk about the cast. Eddie Murphy is Jim Evers, of course, the real estate agent. Him and his wife. Uh, Eddie Murphy is great in this role. Some of his jokes are very funny. Uh... A lot of people criticized him for this movie for some reason. Uh, some jokes he forces a little too much. 
you know, but that's okay. Most of them stick as far as for me, for my personal taste. Some miss the mark a little, but that's okay. Uh, and, uh, Marsha Thomason, I believe that's how you say it, plays his wife Elizabeth who uh, is ba basically looks like the Liz Eliz well we'll get to that but uh, I couldn't really find too much on her I know she was in White Collar great great uh, TV series if you haven't seen that uh, she's good in it Terrence Stamp as Ramsley <laughs> he is great and then Wallace Shawn as Ezra. I don't know if they were going for... It's obviously not the hitchhiking ghost character. But I, I don't know if that was a nod to the hitchhiking ghost character from the attraction. Not sure. But he is in a bunch of Pixar. And then the... Uh, the he plays the butler. Then the other maid... The maid, Emma... Uh, da, Dina Spab, Spabby, I, th I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, she was also in Freaky Friday, the remake with Lindsay Lohan, which was directed by her husband, Mark Waters. So that's a cool connection. And then I uh, save the best for last, Jennifer Tilly as Madame Leota was that was inspired casting she was great as madame leota as someone who loves madame leota obviously from the attraction loved that scene in the attraction so when i saw jennifer tilly knock it out of the park when i was sitting there in the theater i'm like yes she is so good as madame leota they didn't have many characters from the attraction in the, in the movie. Uh, we'll talk about Master Gracie a little later, but uh, they had Madame Leota. They had a few of, I mean, you can pick up some of the ghosts from the attraction in the graveyard scene, but as far as main characters, I think Master Gracie might be, and Madame Leota, might be the only main character and the the singing bus obviously uh but most of you obviously will know jennifer tilly from the chucky franchise bride of chucky code of chucky curse of chucky and then the show obviously was she in cedar chucky i don't i've only seen that one once <laughs> really did not like seed of chucky but uh, I believe she's in that too. Anyway, <laughs> talking about High Mansion, not the Chucky franchise. But um, the kids, I didn't know from anything, or the guy that played Master Gracie. I don't recognize him. If he's in something noteworthy, leave a comment. But I, I didn't look it up. But uh, they actually built the set, the exterior set, in Louisiana, which is cool because that's where the attraction is based, if you didn't know that. <laughs> uh, directed by Rob Minkoff, which, uh, who co-directed Lion King, the animated version, and... Uh, I can't believe I have to say that now, the animated version. <laughs> anyway, and both the two Stuart Little films, the live action Stuart Little films. So, hasn't done much. Maybe he's done some stuff since then. That's all I could remember and all I could see on Wikipedia. Anyway, he tried to stay faithful to the attraction. Some. Uh, places he really nailed as far as that, but some he didn't. Uh, the main protagonist is, of course, Master Gracie, who is 
on a tombstone outside of the attraction and he hanged himself after losing I can talk the love of his life Elizabeth as you can see there that is on a gravestone outside of the attraction so that's cool and then of course having Madame Leota in the movie that stays very true to the attraction having her in it was great I can't imagine her not being in the new one I'm not sure we'll talk about the new one little later uh, the ballroom scene was at the beginning and then it's peppered in a few places at the end but thinking back I can't remember anywhere else that it is I could is it's been a while since I've seen it need to rewatch it but uh, thinking back the ballroom scene from what I can remember is just the opening and then a couple places at the end could be wrong about that okay so we'll move on from that uh, my favorite scene is when they're looking for the key in the mausoleum after they've seen the singing bust uh, great scene loved it so much low intense for kids probably because <laughs> man do those zombies look so good and the reason why it said for the eyes it was all makeup effects done by the great makeup effects artist Rick Baker who won many Oscars he did American Werewolf Men in Black Han Mansion obviously bunch of others that I'm drawing a blank on right now but he's won plenty of Oscars that whole scene I really love thought it was great uh, that of course is not in the attraction <laughs> but uh phantom manor disneyland paris uh they have a th a similar thing where zombies are coming out but there you know they bury people you know in crypts and stuff so ghosts aren't really scary to them so it's more of a western thing Anyway, I didn't want to talk about Phantom Manor, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that whole mausoleum scene with the zombies is great. Probably my favorite part in the film. Yeah, it probably would be. <laughs> I will say, though, the ending for this movie was very weak. Uh, m 80, 85% of the movie, well, probably 90% of the movie is really good. Near, well, I won't say near perfect. It wasn't perfect, but most of it works up until the end. Uh, uh, Master Gracie, of course, thanks Elizabeth is his Elizabeth because she looks just like her they show the painting and stuff and then he wants to kill her so she can be the 1000th ghost and join him in the afterlife and then this portal opens up which you would assume is the bad place <laughs> we can't say the word at least I'll think on YouTube but uh it's a bad place, and uh, just this portal opens up, and then they fight a little. Eddie Murphy fights them a little, and then they find out how to break the curse, and they do. And then, of course, all the spirits can go to the good place. <laughs> and that's basically how it ends. All the spirits just go to the good place, and that's basically how it ends and Master Gracie gets to be with his Elizabeth and they walk off and then 
the Evers pack up their car with Madame Leota and the singing bust, and they drive off. <laughs> and that's how the movie ends. So, the ending for me was weak, but, I mean, you try and come up with an ending to ha the High Mansion. Uh, very curious what they're going to do with the new movie, which we should talk about now because there is a movie scheduled, it has a, a screenplay, has a director, has some of the cast, Luke Wilson's going to be in it, Rosaria Dawson is going to be in it, love both of them, so that will be great, can't wait for that, I wish Guillermo del Toro had had a chance to do his version because he was going to have the Hatbox Ghost in it as, like, the main... I don't know if he would have been the bad guy necessarily, but he would have been one of the main characters, and I hate we missed that yet again. If you didn't know, the Hatbox Ghost was originally at Walt Disney World's version for, like, a week, but he freaked out people because he didn't work. His head would not transfer to his box. So it, it freaked people out, so they removed it. That's where all those boxes are in the attic scene before you get to the bride. I know, I'm a Disney nerd. <laughs> but, uh, eventually, it did come to Disneyland for one of their anniversaries. Very cool. I've seen in person. I've been to Disneyland. We went 18 days in a row one time. A few trips up there, but I wish Disney World could get the Hatbox Ghost. Thought it was going to happen for the 50th. Anyway, <laughs> so I wish Guillermo had had a chance to do his version. He's just so busy with all his projects. He has. He always has like 10 projects going at one time, so hopefully the new one with Luke Wilson and Rosaria Dawson will be great. Ho hope it is. But uh, there is a way to do a franchise. A lot of people said there's no way to do a franchise for High Mansion, but there's so many side characters, like the history the characters, like each character could get their own movie and you could tie it in with like the, what's that, the Secret Society, uh, C, it, Secret Society, anyway, Adventures, if you watch, uh, Offhand Disney, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Alright, we've, we've gone over our time. For this week's episode all about the High Mansion movie. Uh, stay tuned for next week because we will be covering a top another top five film for me, Clue. I'm sorry, Clue the movie. You have to <laughs> signify. I just call it Clue. So look forward to that. Hope you will join me then. Until next time. Go watch Clue so we can review and talk about next week. Bye.